going on, guys? My name is Dimebot. Welcome back to Opposing Views, the show where we take a look at gender, gender orientation, sexuality, and their representation in video games. Joining me once again this show is Lone Samurai, Scarlet Dragon, and Nico Kit Wolf. So, last show we kind of kicked it off, talked a little bit about the overall game industry and what we think, where we fall. Today, we wanted to take a look at two very specific games uh, because they are very much on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of certain things, but yet very close on certain things. Uh, in particular, we want to talk about Tomb Raider and Bayonetta. Uh, with Tomb Raider, we want to take into account the whole series. And Bayonetta, even though there's only two games, there are some differences. We want to talk about those. So let's just kind of start off with, uh, with Tomb Raider because it's a game that a lot of us have had experience with. So let's just show a hands who's played at least, well, and Nico, you can say something, who's played at least one or two Tomb Raider games? I sort of have, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think actually the real question there should be who hasn't played the Tomb Raider game. Yeah. Five-year-olds. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, let's just kind of look at how Tomb Raider has kind of evolved over the years. Because the original Tomb Raider uh, was very much, she's a pair of polygons going around robbing stuff. That's pretty much the story. I remember being disappointed because her braid disappeared. I was absolutely obsessed with Tomb Raider, like, all through the series, I've played every game. Honestly, she was my role model for the longest time. All I remember from the original Tomb Raider is this. Ugh. Yeah, actually, my mum said that. I said, oh, look, mum, it's the voice actor from Tomb Raider. I was like, she doesn't say anything, but, uh, she runs into a wall. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I remember the original Tomb Raider games very well on PC. And, uh... Because we were old enough to remember them. Yes. But, you know, there was also the... <sighs> the way the character got portrayed in Hollywood. And then the character got rebooted as everything is these days. And I really like the new Lara Croft in the new Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. Nico, you mm -hmm, like you have an opinion there. Go on. No, 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 no. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. It's she never as simple as that. She a couple of times though, wasn't she? It, yeah, she has been rebooted a couple of times. And the new version is a reboot but we'd already seen the young Lara Croft. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a reboot, it's a complete like that, yeah. retelling. Yeah. I've seen a few young Lara Croft. Because the, the first reboot, the prequel, where she was tomb raiding with, I can't remember, it's like a friend of her it's dad's. Anniversary. That's the one. Um, anniversary and Underworld. And that's, that, yeah. That three episodes. And she was like 15 in that game and she was tomb raiding with her dad's friend or something like that. Oh, no, yeah. sorry. You were talking about Tomb Raider 4. That's it's the, the secrets. It's after yeah. they think she's... Well, yeah. They think she's died and they're retelling stories of their experiences yeah. with her. And at one point, she is a teenager from Hollywood. Yeah. See, the thing is, like, to me, the new Tomb Raider, I would call the first real reboot because it's the first time they've actually given the character some purpose other than go steal shiny, shiny ugh, go steal shiny shit from tombs. So Isn't yeah, it's not become really her obsession. Yeah. But uh, it is Nico. But the thing I kind of want to focus on a little bit with this is um, there's a little bit of difference in the way she's portrayed, as I mentioned, we mentioned last episode, in the cutscenes sometimes as in the gameplay. Um. And it's not just a, a gender or anything thing. It's the way that games portray reactions to things in general sometimes. But, like, for example, let's take the scene in the Tomb Raider reboot where and everybody got all up in arms about the, oh, the rape scene. Please, play the scene and see what it really is. It doesn't even go anywhere near as far as you think it does from people bitching and moaning about it. But so If you fail it, you get murdered. Yeah, and then she kills It's not some... a rape scene. It's an intimidation and death scene. Yeah. And there then is she... a song. Yeah. But it's it's implied. Yeah. It's not graphic. Yeah. And then she kills the she kills her first, you know, somebody for the first time and she's utterly horrified and she's having this huge reaction and puking on the ground and just totally shaken up. And then that they were pretty damn quick though. Yeah, and that whole emotional reaction is jerked away from you the instant the game puts you back in control of the character and is like, Okay, now go headshot people. But okay, and, and this is the thing, and from a male point of view Every single Far Cry, Far Cry 1 to 4, has had a similar sort of thing, especially Far Cry 3. Yes. But because it's from a male perspective, it's fine. Because it's a woman, well, oh, no, they can't do that. Oh. Shut up. Now, I've got, I've got issues in general with any game that has this big emotional reaction to somebody 
killing somebody for the first time or something. And then five seconds later, you're back in control of the character, and it's just like they've been doing it for 50 years, and they're a cold-blooded killer now. It's it's just very disorienting, and they could do it a bit better. Like, yeah. in, you do it, but you're doing it one-on-one, -on -one, and then you're slowly getting into it. But that... I, I do like the one thing that they did with that scene in Tomb Raider with the implied assault, which is Laura's basic reaction is, I'm scared, but oh hell no, this is not going down like this. I can think of plenty of games where it would have been cut to black and Laura with the reaction of what happened afterwards with no input from you. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid probably would have done it that way. In fact, yeah, I can... it, was, it was a reactive scene. Yeah, yeah I... hey, this is Harry. Hi, Harry Cat. I can guarantee Kojima would have done it that way almost. <laughs> Um, no, he'd just make it really fucking weird. Well, yeah, there would have been a mech involved and tentacles. Vampires and... and, and I've, seen, I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. And, and a cardboard box. And so also, a box. also, Robo-Obama would have been involved. Yes. America! War! Never changes! <laughs> yeah, thank, yeah, we thank Obama over here for things. Yeah, we do too. Um, but I think... <laughs> That's yeah. not what you said earlier, Dime. Shut the yeah, hell up. Yeah, but you spent freedom, freedom bucks. We have the Queen's crown. Freedom bucks have nothing to do with the president. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you don't have the face on we, them. We... Unlike... You've got the dead ones on there. Unlike, dead presidents on their notes. Yep. And unlike y'all, our, our overall head of our country gets replaced every four to eight years instead of us having to wait 90 years for her to just die already. <laughs> Yeah, but y'all, y'all, queen, she, she, like, she... One is not giving up because one's son is just not good enough. So, in all fairness, fairness, the queen doesn't actually have power. They separated state and parliament a long time ago. Yeah. We still have to elect four years, except the difference is instead of picking... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, in, instead of having to pick between two dickheads, we've got, like, four of them. Oh, okay. You have, you guys have more, more of a buffet. Um, so... <laughs> No, no, the difference is they call we, that don't have we don't have Republicans. They're all Democrats of one degree or another. There are just no Republicans. <laughs> no Republicans. Sounds like paradise. Anyways, um, so talking about Tomb Raider, what do you guys prefer in the character portrayal? Do you prefer, uh, prefer kind of the grittier, more realistic Lara Croft? Or do you kind of like the old school, like where it was just kind of... It was really kind of the end of the old golden age of video games, where it was very happy-go-lucky, carefree, ah, la, 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 I'm stealing shit, and you can't stop me, ha, ha, ha. Also raptors for some reason. Also raptors. Oh, that T-Rex was amazing. I love that scene in anniversary. Yeah, it, it's kind of like one of those. It's it's, um, it's very polished. I wouldn't say it's happy-go-lucky, because at the end of the day, some of those, some of those um, sort of scenes were really difficult to win. Like that bear in the first Tomb Raider, the one, the first one you find at the fountain. Yes. The only way I could do it was by sitting in the fountain and then jumping out to shoot it when it got bored and ran away. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose with the more grittier one, it was kind of more of a backstory about how she came to be, which has always been kind of alluded to. She crashed in the woods somewhere and had to sort of fight her way out. And suddenly she emerges this adventurer who has a, a thirst that needs quenching. And I think like with the... Um, I do believe that was done badly when she shoots that guy and then suddenly she's like, oh my God, oh my God, let's go. Um, you, they could have done a little bit better to kind of put in a cutscene where she gets up all determined and kind of, you know, killer instinct takes over. But yeah, it's kind of one of those. It's like, I'm looking forward to the next installment in the new Tomb Raider where it is more polished, you have more power, she knows what she's doing, the gameplay's a little bit better and a little bit maybe more tongue-in-cheek. For me, um, movie. It's actually one of the few movies, uh, right. video games and movie franchises that actually worked. Mm. Mm. And it did make Angelina Jolie Angelina Jolie after all. She did well with it though. Yeah, yeah, she was actually good. It, even Daniel Craig, Daniel Craig was brilliant in it. I laughed my ass off about that. Daniel Craig, a British man, was playing an American. Angelina Jolie, an American. It happens woman. a lot. It happens a lot in but, films. So but, fucking yeah, weird. Just, but Angelina Jolie, like she was about to say, is American playing a British... Uh, yeah. Nico, what, what's your take on that with the Tomb Raiders? You Tomb Raiders. You, I, I actually don't have an opinion because it's not a series I play a lot. Sorry. Okay. Fair enough. I, I will say this. One thing that I want to address with the Tomb Raider game is I've heard a lot of people say in, in relation to the ways that Laura can die in the game, like, oh my god, oh no, that's that's too graphic. You shouldn't do that to a girl. No, some of the deaths in tomb, some of the deaths in the Tomb Raider game, you shouldn't do to any character model. The river wasn't 
long when it goes through the internet. Yes. I don't care if that was... was I don't care if that was an anthropomorphic eggplant in the river scene. You shouldn't do that. It's some of the I did death look scenes. Up on Tomb Raider three or four, there was a, a one of the PlayStation versions where you could save the game no matter what you were doing. I set myself on fire in the final level and saved it. So every time I reloaded the level, I was on fucking fire. I was absolutely heartbroken. I had to start again. Scarlet Dragon, everybody. I, I thought oh, it's alright. I'll save it when it reloads. Should be fine. Wow. But then again, even in the earlier Tomb Raider games, I remember me and my brother for a giggle looking up online back with dial up um, to look for the cheat codes where you could make a head explode or make her naked was an option. Though. It was not good. Nico. So. Dial up, sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> I, I love your impressions. <laughs> I think. I think Tomb Raider is an interesting thing because it's gone from being it's gone from being a very empowered character to showing us how the character gets empowered, and it's shown a lot of character development along and it also shows, especially with that studio, a real huge willingness to go out on a limb with that kind of storytelling. So, the other one we wanted to talk about was um, Bayonetta, and oh boy, Bayonetta. Bayonetta. The guy showed me videos. I, I kind of thought it was a joke at first, and then somebody told me that is the actual game. Made by wasn't it made by the same people who made Beautiful Joe? Not Beautiful Joe, but no. Ugh. DMC. DMC. Yep. I'm sorry. It's Devil May Cry. Yeah. Um, here's the thing about the Bayonetta games is they've changed drastically, at least the motivations for the character from Bayonetta 1 to Bayonetta 2. In Bayonetta 1, it's your typical amnesia story. You've got no real idea why you're doing the things you're doing. You're just going around beating the crap out of things with your hair. I thought you were trying to save your daughter. <laughs> well, that's what it ends up being, but you don't know that till like the last boss fight. <laughs> I forgot about my daughter. Now, the baby. The well, baby. She, has, she has amnesia. And it's a very cliche video game thing. In Bayonetta 2, you're pretty much just trying to rescue your friend's soul from hell. And a sister. You're literally becoming Kratos, but yeah. instead you're a badass witch lady. But then yeah, all of a sudden... This is the thing. It's the fi yeah, exactly. There you go. Neko put it on, on the line there. It's female god of war. It is. But the <laughs> even the interesting thing about it, though, is um, Bayonetta, especially Bayonetta 2, there is no love interest... She's not portrayed as being weak ever, even in the cutscenes. And the only the only main male characters in the entire game are the butt of all of the jokes. So, by contrast, you have the fact that Bayonetta has some of the most unrealistic proportions. Uh, Yahtzee, Zero Punctuation, said it best. He's like, people are talking about Bayonetta as a sex symbol. I can't view Bayonetta as a sex symbol because she's so anatomically incorrect. Moving on. Yeah, what was it he said? I have to get on a step ladder just to shag it. Yeah, but the other thing is, you get this whole thing where she's this badass, confident fighting woman, and then she does her special move, and her costume is apparently made out of her hair, and suddenly she's butt naked. And Also, when she gets hurt more, she loses her hair, doesn't she? A little bit in the first one, yeah. The other thing is, and Brian Eltano, I saw this in IGN, they were talking about the same thing with the game, and he said, you know, it just has that feeling that 90% of the game was filmed by a great cameraman, and then the 10% that's the cutscenes were filmed by a pervy cameraman who zooms straight up her butthole as soon as he has a chance. Yeah, I saw some of them. She's suddenly, she's like kicking ass, and then suddenly her special move in the cutscene is to do the splits, have her camera zoom up her asshole so she's Van Damme in it, and then come back like everything's normal, and you just kind of sat there going... <laughs> yeah. And I think that... I think that it's interesting because one thing that I think is really good about the way from the, the gender role, the way that Bayonetta is portrayed is there are none of the typical video game tropes of, oh, well, you're a strong female character, but you have to have a man to help you at some point or save you at some point. She is constantly saving, like in Bayonetta 2, the kid that's supposed to be, you know, strong and, you know, kind of powerful like her. She's constantly saving his ass from everything. Constantly. So she even get it even gets to the point where he turns into a little squirrel and she shoves him in the front of her blouse so he doesn't get in any more trouble while she's fighting. Yeah, no, that, what did you just say? She shoves him where? In the front of her little blouse thing. Uh, from what I know about most women, their bra does become a, a second handbag. 
I've seen women carry their cats in their bra, like the tiny little Russian cats. Yeah. Like, they... But it's 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 interesting because there's all these dictomies in that game, like what Lone just picked up on from what I said. There's all these little dictomies in that game. And she's portrayed so interestingly, and I just... It's so erratic. It's so erratic. It drives me bonkers. So we'll kind of go around the table and see what people think. Uh, who wants to lead us off? Mika. Okay. <laughs> that was that was Nika's powering up noise. <laughs> I just went into the level. Nika, yes. level two. Uh, no, I'm gonna kind of have to defend the males here. Yes, almost all the males in the game are literally punching bags for Bayonetta. All of them. And it's just kind of it it. Is it right to put them in a complete opposite spectrum that they're now the butts of all the jokes? And I don't know. I. But that's also how they wrote her so and wrote the series itself. Mm -hmm. And I think Bayonetta is a cool character. I, lo I love her. I hate her proportions. I don't fucking get it. Just because she's a witch lady doesn't mean she has to have a neck of a giraffe. <laughs> just. N it's just one of those this, things. This is, this is one of those times, Dime, you need to be putting the picture up for emphasis. Like, she she's she has the ne she has the neck of neck of a not gazelle a neck of a giraffe, like the legs of a fucking giraffe too. And she's just giraffe lady. Like what the fuck? <laughs> but she's very she awesome. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Dragon Guard Dragon Guard Three did the same thing. The the woman the men are all useless, sadistic, angry perverted old men and all this stuff but the female character is like oh yeah I'm a badass and I'm gonna beat you all up and use you as sex objects yeah and that's just a big problem so is it fi fair to do the opposite spectrum that's a very good point let's uh, finish we'll come back to that thought let's finish up and see what Scarlet thinks and Lone um, to be honest I haven't played Bayonetta so this might be a bit of a noob thing but after you guys kind of like mentioned it to me I thought I've got to see this myself I watched Zero Punctuation I watched a few videos and it seems to the point where it's almost like the games industry and films as well and TV adverts I see it everywhere in order to compensate for women being suppressed for so long they're doing the same thing to men now I'm a true feminist I believe men and women should be equal and suddenly making men the butt of the jokes that's not making it equal that's revenge and I particularly, I don't like it. There's no need to make sort of male characters suffer for the way that women have been portrayed in the past. I might be wrong with that. Other people may think, no, it's their turn to be the butt of the joke. But I still don't see that as equality. I see that as just like digging to try and please a feminazi audience. Yes, the feminazis. Okay, political rant over. No, no. Lone, go ahead. Hail um, the queen! <laughs> Um, <laughs> you mean all this? Yes, well, <laughs> one is perfectly fine with it. I think we need to have all types of... No, we have to have also all types of the spectrum. Yeah, it, it's it's going too far. It, it's going the other way, but in a way... Yeah, really don't care. I... You're happy with I... males being portrayed as the butt of the jokes? So yeah, that... yeah. Really? In this way, yeah. I because think... Because actually, playing Bayonetta, there's a very big religious overtone. And for... When it comes to that sort of thing, what some of Bayonetta 2, and I don't know whether Dime will like con contradict me on this, but she is taking down heaven. And it, it, there's a massive thing against the angels. Yeah, and... but the thing is, angels are technically genderless. That's the whole idea. Yes, angels don't have a gender. She is a witch. And the witch versus the angels thing is a very old story, and it's kind of thrown it completely the other way. I kind of like it in a way, but then I'm not religious, so I'm not bothered by that. There, it's... there is a very heavy religious component to Bayonetta. Uh, I agree a little bit with both of you, uh, Nico and Scarlet and Lone. Um, I think that in a way, it's in general, the swing back in the other direction uh, is a bad thing. Uh, it, I don't think that there needs to be necessarily... There's always going to be the butt of a joke, Lone, and that's that's the point of a joke. There's always going to be the butt of a joke. And in the context of Bayonetta, I don't think it's that bad a thing. But in the context of the wider games industry, it 
is something that they need to look at because you, I almost want to say, you know, give, give everybody equal time being the butt of the joke, you know, because there is such a thing as trying to, trying to do the politically correct thing, quote unquote, and swing too far back in the other direction. It's like so. they're apologizing, apologizing for Devil May Cry. And but having all male main characters and the female main characters to be saved and yeah, but at, at some point no, you say but you say that Neko, but Devil May Cry two and three had a very strong female character in it. But this, but in the second game, the female still had to be saved. Yeah, from, from hell. herself. Yeah, That's exactly it. from hell. He went to hell to save her, and then she became an incredibly strong female character in number three. Trust me, I love her. her. I, I love her. She's one of my favorite. You mean but, four? Three was a prequel. Yeah. Yeah. No, four. Yeah. 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 I, I get confused. The thing is, but, though, there's always okay. a bit of a joke. Wherever it's Tingle in Zelda, whom I love, but well, there, there is always a bit of a joke. But it's it's when it becomes too far, and every character of a certain gender or background it's, becomes. It's when it becomes pandering to yeah. to what they perceive as what needs to be done for political correctness sake or fairness sake. That's that's when it becomes a problem. When you can tell that, well, this wasn't originally part of it, but we threw it in because some lawyer or a corporate manager said that we needed to, because, then it then it becomes an issue. And that's one thing that I think is one of the similar things between Bayonetta and Tomb Raider is you can tell in the story writing for Tomb Raider and Bayonetta that both the characters were written because that was the story arc that the original writer of the game intended. Maybe with some modifications, but it's the one that he intended because it was the one, the story he wanted to tell. Yeah, there's all these arguments that all the things that happened to Laura, some of them are horrible. Well, they'd be horrible to happen to any character. Or that she becomes too powerful and the game's too bloody, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to get into that. That's all gameplay and opinion stuff. But the way that she's written is great. If there was a male character in a game that was written that way, it would still be a fantastic game because she's written well. Bayonetta, the same thing. You substitute in a male... Well, you substitute in Dante for Bayonetta and you still have a well-written game. Yep. So, But the differences they make there is Lara is... This is the first time in Tomb Raider's history that Lara's ever been properly proportioned. Ever. First game, it was a mistake. They didn't mean to make her tits that big. And then they just... I, I, I did hear a programming error somewhere, yeah. but that may have been a lie. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but, and they were triangular, so... Yeah, yeah but, but still, polygons back then. Mm, delicious that was like polygons. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. okay, this is the thing, though, is that... Um, I've forgotten the train of thought, but... Um, yeah, it's... It's six of one, half a dozen of another. And yeah. it, it's one of those things where you're going to have... Bayonetta is taking it wildly the other way, but how many Bayonettas are there? Yeah, and Bayonetta there is a Bayonetta is a caricature, whereas Lara is intended to be real. Yep. This is the yeah. thing, and Yahtzee said it perfectly well. It is that they're both the sexualized one is Bayonetta, but the one you would actually want to is Lara Croft in the new Tomb Raider, and what not because of the Angelina Jolie or the original sexualized one, but because she's real. I mean, for me, I think that a good role is one that can be played by either a man or a woman. I'm going to go to the Alien film for this because I love the way they wrote Ripley to be a man. And then obviously Sigourney Weaver came along and played it. And it was revolutionary. And it didn't need to be revolutionary at that point. We could have done it years ago. A really good role, whether or not... I mean, they've got a 50-50 chance of picking a Link or a child or whoever for the, for the main character. But it should be interchangeable. You should mm -hmm. be able to go, a man can play that role just as well as a woman can play that role. Speaking of Link, Nintendo was purposely coy about whether or not what we saw in the Zelda trailer at E3 this year was, Nico? I had to move the camera. I'm sorry. It was uh, about whether it was actually Link or Zelda. They wouldn't say it one way or the other. And it could have been either one, because let's face it, Link and Zelda both are blonde and have pointy ears. Hi, hi, Hylians, and they're the only blonde ones, if I remember so correctly. They are they are the only two blonde Hylians, yes. So, it yeah. It matter, though, because, I mean, things like, it's always been cliche that Link saves um, Zelda, but recently they've kind of tried to reinvent that. Like, I know the DS version of Spirit Tracks, the ghost of Princess Zelda actually follows you around to help you in your thing. She's still quite girly and afraid of rats, which is a bit crap. Um, but, yeah, I mean, but you're it, afraid of spiders. Spiders have poison. Of but yeah, uh, 
thing, things like this happen, and it's like the uh, they've reinvented Zelda to be Petra now in The Wind Waker, and she becomes quite a stronger character. And I think it's something they're trying to like not lose the background, but they're improving it. Well, and it goes even further back than that. In '64, Ocarina of Time, one of the most badass characters in the whole game is actually Zelda. Chic time. Yep, and let's not forget um, in Skyward Sword. I mean, it's she a pushed little. She off a cliff. Well, she did, but it's a little bit more of a return to the old school Zelda formula, but that Zelda is not just a damsel in distress the whole time. She's a much more well-realized character in Skyward Sword. There are motivations and reasons behind everything that's going on, and it's not just its not just like Peach, who is just a worthless bump on a log that just gets kidnapped by Bowser every 30 seconds. Daisy lives in La La Land. Yeah. yeah. So. I, no, actually, of the two, I think Daisy is the worst. Because she let Donkey Kong get a kidnapper. Bowser, just... actually, Bowser has to actually work at it, but Donkey Kong just takes Daisy. Come on, yeah. let's be fair. Well, she thinks yeah. Daisy just like that shit. Yeah. She thinks she wasn't taken. She kind of went along willingly. Went, oh no. I well, think... the real question is, where did Diddy Kong come from? Yeah, I Same. think. Uh, I think. <laughs> Except for the two well, different breeds of animal. I think Daisy might have a little bit of Stockholm syndrome. Also, they've never. Ex- <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. They've never explained. Uh, they've never adequately explained where the Koopalings or Bowser Jr. come from either. Yeah, but how would they be turtles? Turtles do exist without like copulation. They, I think they lay eggs. They do lay eggs. They lay eggs. Yeah, they lay eggs. But, but and they do actually change the gender as well. As yeah, but anyway. Anyways, all right. So <laughs> you started as a woman. <laughs> so. <laughs> What can, what uh, we're winding down? What thoughts do we want everybody watching this to kind of take away from this conversation about Tomb Raider and Bayonetta two? Well, um, I'll I'll finish this off. So we'll start and go with uh, Lone first. Um, it's not really a big issue, to be completely honest. And as the word was used early, feminazi is actually more the major issue. Um, yes, it's good to see more strong female characters, but then. You don't want to go too far and make it a parody. Okay. Scarlet? Um, I think the reason feminazis exist is because of male misogyny in the past, and I think it's unfortunate that they have the name feminazi, because at the end of the day, they are just very passionate about what they feel. And the thing is, they're looking for equality in everything. They may be a little bit off, because it might be the smallest detail, but to women, that's still important. And I think once you lower your standards the games industry will also lower theirs. And I think sort of in recent years, it's important for, for the players to sort of say, this. I stand up and say, you know, this is the character I want to see because this represents my real life. We're not all white men, buff and all the rest of it. So, no. but yeah, I think, I think it's something that the players need to keep on at and sort of reflecting that in, in video sales and reviews and all the rest of it. So I think it is an issue. I just think it's a problem if it swings too far the other way and men sort of become second class. I think it, it's important for everyone to sort of have their say. Okay, Nico? Scarlet said it best. Oh, I... All right. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. yes, please. I like strong female characters. Keep, keep adding them, but females aren't just only strong. They have all the sort of characteristics. Add them all to the pot. There are weak characters. There are strong. There are, like, in between, bored, blah. Just big balance and make them human. Think mm-hmm. about how you would do it. I think for my part, um, you know, look at the games that you're buying. Think about the way the characters are represented. Uh, as Scarlett said, we're not all, you know, sh- uh, white males in our 30s with massive muscles and short haircuts. We want nuanced characters. We want characters that are real, that aren't just stereotypes, that aren't just, you know, one or the other. We want characters that actually reflect who we are, what we see in real life, and actually that we can relate to. So as consumers, it's up to us to vote to get those kind of games with our dollars because that's the only thing that publishers are going to listen to. So go out there and yeah. find what oh, you like. Or your pounds, people. Oh, yeah. Or your pounds. Or your pounds. Or your pounds. Money. Yeah, money. But, yeah. But vote with your money. Vote vote with your money and let the publishers know that, hey, I like this or I don't like this. And remember that not everything has to be a serious portrayal. Caricatures, being the butt of a joke, having a butt of a joke, having a good time in the end is what it's all about. Because these are video games and we play video games to have a good time. So I want to thank Nico Kitwolf, Lone Samurai, and Scarlet Dragon for joining me once again. 
Next time, we're going to be tackling pretty much just one issue, and it'll probably get pretty bonkers. We're going to be talking about the Japanese versus Western developers and the way they portray these things. So it's... Dun, dun, dun. Hold on to your hats, kiddies. It's going to be a fun one. If you want to know when it's going up, click the like button, hit the subscribe coming up. I'll throw up a couple selections of other videos for you to see, including the premiere episode of Opposing Views. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name is Dimebot. Later. Later.